Istria, Croatia is renowned for its award-winning olive oil and wine. Join us as we revisit the region and eat and drink our way through the peninsula. Meet new friends and learn about what makes this place special. It's all in the latest episode of Cracking Croatian Wine. <laughs> okay. After months of being locked down in Zagreb thanks to COVID-19, we're ready to get some fresh air. We're headed to Selina. It's a sleepy village that has a handful of holiday homes and villas. Our base for the month is Villa Familia, a luxury house we'll be sharing with our friend, veteran of Chinchin.gai. We've seen the house in photos before, but it's more stunning in person. Somebody's excited about wine. Priorities. We get our tasting samples sorted before we go upstairs to rest. In the morning, Vedran hunts down some wild asparagus and prepares a staple Croatian dish, frittaia. This freakishly good omelet has won fans around the world, including Shireen. Oh my. Mm. The town of Vodnjen is home to a fantastic wine and olive oil producer called Medea. We've been fans of their products for years, but this is the first time we've visited the state. Winemakers Marko Krstacic and Ivana Piršić greet us. After a quick look into the cellar, we start tasting the wines. The new vintage of the rosé immediately catches our attention. Very good to me. Um, I really appreciate the spicy nose. Almost like a bird's eye chili kind of smell on the nose. And it's also quite herbal. On the palate, you also have a little bit of capsicum. Uh, obviously, citrus. So I find it really complex. And the finish is spicy and quite persistent as well. We get to our favorite wine from Medea, the Punta Greca. It's a single vineyard Merlot from. This is the southeast vineyard in Istria. Yeah. At least right now, it has this graphite peppery notes when the grape is not overripe. I really love it. Medea releases olive oil under the name Salvela. They use their own olives and press the fruit themselves. They make several monoverado oils. Some are extra spicy. <laughs> Shireen's favorite is made from the local variety, Bouja. It also has a certain freshness, fruitiness on the nose. I think like for me, I don't chase or too spicy, too bitter, too whatever. I like everything but balance. Hunting for oysters. Just a five minute drive from our villa is the Istrita Seashell Shack on the Limsky Canal. We got the contact from a friend and it looks like we're on the right track. Unlimited oyster. This place sells their produce to local restaurants, but private customers can get in on the action too. They're alive? Yes, they are. We're anxious to chow down, so we rush home to shuck them. The result of the oysters. The quality is summed up in Shireen's expressions. Good. High above the river Mirna is Ipsha. They're regarded as one of the finest olive oil producers in Istria, and thanks to Ivan Ipsha, they started the production of high quality wines in the recent years. Their vineyards are among the highest in Istria. This is an impressive vineyard. Uh -huh. <laughs> we take a quick stroll through Ivan's hometown of Opratalia, where Ipsha tasting room is located. The village offers splendid views over northwest Istria. We don't have time to stick around though. We're heading to the cellar to taste a few barrel samples. The latest vintages are excellent, but Shireen has her eye on Ipsha's prosciutto. What are you excited about? Prosciutto is as nice as the wines. <laughs> Ivan takes us up to taste a few wines from the bottle. We're big fans of the Santa Elena Red, a blend of Merlot and Rafosco. Ipsha is set to release their first single vineyard Malvasia, also named Santa Elena. It has a good balance between the freshness and also a little bit more oxidation to give a little bit more complexity, just a little bit of nuttiness, also a little bit of um, tangerine feel and tannins into it. But I think this, this is the kind of wine that shows that it can break convention. Orange wine doesn't have to be just one style. This is a winery to keep your eye on, but Ipsha still hangs its hat on olive oil production. Ivan tells us what it takes to produce great olive oil. 
So to produce a great olive oil, first we need to be ecological. So without without chemicals, without pesticides, everything natural. To have a fantastic olive oil, we need to know when to harvest. So the most important thing is to know when it, they're half black, half green. So it's important. Why? Because it's impossible to have all olives around to be black from the outside, green from the inside. Because if we have the black from inside, it means they're oxidated. So we are trying not to have oxidated olive oil. The third thing, it's very important to to press it fast. So it's been four, four to six hours from the harvest. Producing wine, you need to work more in the uh, in the cellar, work with wine to live with wine. Uh, olive oil, if you do the perfect harvest, if you do the perfect meal, you will have the perfect oil. Back at the Villa Familia, we try to get some rest and relaxation in before some friends come over. Our house is drawing so much attention. Look how nice it is on the inside. Oh, no. Is that for real? Our local friends and winemakers want to come over and eat. So tonight, we're cooking up an Istrian seafood feast. <laughs> yes, boss. Yes, boss. Time to scale and clean the fish and then fire up the grill. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoying. There's something special about fresh seafood in an open fire. Psychedelic fish! This is the best thing tonight. What is it? Bread and risotto. <laughs> it's a meal well done, complete with the wine. YOLO! The mornings at Villa Familia are fabulous and I treasure my cup of coffee and the peace and quiet. I'm gonna miss my daily routine here, my morning cup of joa with this outstanding view. Wow. De Grassi is one of the original high quality wineries in Istria. Today I've brought along a friend. Giannis is traveling through Croatia, back to his native country of Greece, and he stopped by for the afternoon. Say hi, Giannis. Thanks for coming. Yamas. <laughs> this is the first time I actually have been to De Grassi. I like the wines a lot. I haven't been to the cellar. I'm glad I brought Giannis along because proprietor and winemaker Moreno de Grassi only speaks Croatian and Italian. Moreno is a high energy guy that brims with enthusiasm. He's also regarded by his peers as the finest blender in Istria. I think Giannis is impressed. My God. Incredible. Orgasm. <laughs> Orgasm. After tasting through the cellar, we find that Moreno has prepared us lunch. First up is fresh prosciutto made from wild boar. Everybody darlings. Next, Adriatic scampi, which Moreno pairs with some of his finest whites. Wasn't expecting to have some, some fresh scampi, but I'm not complaining. I must say that Terre Bianchi Cuvée Blanc Reserva went outstanding with scampi. <laughs> wild boar steaks. Moreno hunted down the animal just a day before we arrived. They go great with Degrassi's signature red wines. So you feel like a king? Moreno opens up an older vintage of his Terra Bianca Cuvée Rouge Reserva, a serious Bordeaux blend that tastes like a fine Super Tuscan. Yanis and I think the tasting is over, but Moreno has a surprise for us. He disgorges a few bottles of sparkling wine that he makes for his friends and family. Bravo! Bravo! We love the wines of Degrassi, and Moreno has given us an afternoon that we'll never forget. Okay. A few days later, our friend Milan Budinski, head winemaker at Vina Laguna, comes over for dinner. He's a professional spear fisherman and brought us the daily catch. Scampi, scallops, dentex, sea bream, and scusha, also known as mackerel. Now, this is scusha. So the, the taste difference is huge. Okay. I know, the show is like Scampiorama. We're just lucky, I guess. I'm fond of seafood because in Switzerland, of course we... Yes, I understand. The Dentex is superb. How much do you like Dentex? It's a great evening filled with fabulous food and wine. However, my annoying personality is starting to get to everybody. Like life? You want to bang it? Becky, you like it? Like life? You want to bang it? <laughs> you like that shit? 
It's like going for the... Are you getting annoyed? It's so different. Yes. Why? Sure. You no hate me? Why. No one knows why. <laughs> The village of Kaldir is home to another one of Croatia's wine superstars, Benvenuti. It's great to see brothers and proprietors Nicola and Albert Benvenuti again. It's the real vineyard car. Albert agrees to take us through all the vineyards. Our first stop is Benvenuti's prized vineyard, Santa Elisabetta. Okay, uh, Santa Elisabetta. From there till this vineyard here, it's Malvasia. Here, it's Solterra. Benvenuti farms four separate positions. Some are among the highest in Istria, while others face nearby Moltovun. The lowest position is on fertile soil, which is reflected in the big yields. We need some serious green harvesting. <laughs> too big. Too big. Somehow it's too big. All home products except the cheese. <laughs> Back in the tasting room, somebody looks excited to try the latest vintages. Uh, about tasting? Oh, it's not coming here. The Benvenuti Anno Domini Malvasia is macerated and barrel aged. It's one of the finest examples of the grape in Croatia. This is my favorite Malvasia, year after year. And it ages brilliantly. Next up are Benvenuti's two premium red wines, the Anno Domini Terran and Santa Elisabetta, which is also made from Terran. This is only the second vintage of the latter. Getting a little loud and lively in the tasting room. I think Santa Elizabeth is a little more internationally acceptable, a little more rounder, plusher, a little less acidity, where the Turan Anno Domini is uh, a little bit more wild with the city. It's great to see the winery getting a steady stream of visitors, something that's a rarity during this odd year. We finish the tasting with Benvenuti's legendary sweet wines. Is that your favorite? Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> you want to smell it? You want to smell it? You want to smell it? Ah, tasting room. We wish we could stay here all day, but it's time to move on. What are you doing? Cleaning the pool. <laughs> Back at the Villa Familia, we try to clean up and burn off as many calories as possible. It seems as all if we do here is eat, though there are no complaints. It's not fully cooked. I just wanted it to sit in this marinade for me. Sudanese like you do. Oh, the, be the beans are done. That's a sudden. Ooh. Oh, good job. Oh. Ooh. For our last meal, we're going to make a traditional Croatian dish. So Pekka is a traditional dish cooked under a ceramic bell over an open fire. We've had one with fish, with lamb, with octopus. So we're going to try to do our little homemade version. Capsicum. Some potatoes, tomatoes, onions, garlic, olive oil and a little bit of red wine. And finally, the octopus. Put down the octo, cover, and stick it in the oven. Let it bake slowly until, voila. It's so soft. Did we succeed? Let's ask Shireen. <laughs> no, seriously. I like that it's still quite soft. Perfectly cooked. It's so salty. It's our last morning, so we pack up and hit the road. The space. It's been a great stay at the Villa Familia, and Istria holds a soft spot in our hearts. We got the chance to see some old friends and taste the latest vintages. Goodbye now for Istria. We'll be back soon. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.